Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Rock to You Studio and today I'm sharing with you some collage artist trading cards. Artist trading cards are two and a half by three and a half inches and they're just a fun little bite of art that you can trade with people and send in little envelopes and things like that. Um, I'm having a giveaway on my channel as you guys know. It, the announcement will be tomorrow the 13th as to the 15 people who have won and um, 14 of those people are getting a printed piece and I thought it would be nice to send something handmade so I decided to make some collage artist trading cards today on our Art Joy Sharing live stream channel. We have a channel specifically for live streaming and myself and Peg Robinson live stream every Thursday at 1030 Central Time. So you can come and join us. You can be in the chat and talk in the chat to the other um, people who are attending or you can watch it in, re in recorded real time later on the channel or I usually make a speed version with a voiceover like this of each show if I have time to do that. So that's what I'm doing today. I'm making a speed voiceover version of the live stream show. So I have a lot of little pieces of things, backgrounds, um, die cuts, t stamp tissue paper, washi tape, other little bits and bobs, just all kinds of stuff. Some of it I've created myself. Some of it has been sent to me in Happy Mail and I have all kinds of paper scraps that I can collage with. I just have all kinds of stuff and I just grabbed a few of my bins. I have a bin full of artist trading card backgrounds that are already done. Some of them were sent to me, some of them I've created myself and it's just this whole container which will come in very handy because in June we are going to have the ATC a day challenge again, which we've had for the last couple of years in our Art Joy of Sharing Facebook group, which supports the channel. Um, you can come and join that too. I'll make sure that all the links to the Facebook group and the other channel are below the video so that you can go and check those things out. The Facebook group is an art community for sharing your art and the things that you are creating. And we also have challenges and prompts and different things at different times during the year and during the month so you can come and join us over there just make sure that you answer the questions that pop up when you ask to join the group if you don't answer the questions then we'll just consider you someone who shouldn't be in the group and we will decline your your invitation so <laughs> be sure that you do answer those questions it's three simple questions where did you hear about us you know do you promise to to um not advertise in our group or try to sell things in our group or post inflammatory things, that type of stuff. It's just no big deal. So I started out with a background that had some stamping on it and I collaged on a few pieces of painty paper. One of them had some dots on it from a stencil and the other ones were just, I think, gel prints. And then I added a couple die cuts to that one, um, some sprigs of leafy branchy looking things and a little die cut bird and then I set that one aside to, to dry and moved on to the next one. The next one was a gel printed background with some um, inks, inks uh, alcohol inks that I had tried at one point and I put some strips of torn paper and some washi tape and just different things kind of in first a horizontal pattern and then a vertical pattern to create an area to draw the eye and I'm using greens and blues on that one turquoise and then there was a die cut next to me that had it had some patterns and then a couple butterflies at the top and I cut the two butterflies off and put them on that card and then I stuck down the rest of the die cut which has it looks like maybe a dream catcher and some other stuff. It was kind of like a collage die and I put it on another card which I never did finish that pink card <laughs> but it's it's there for some other time. The next one I grab is a card with some paint and stenciling on it. It looks like it's maybe uh, 
made from from a cereal box or something like that, some kind of packaging paper. And I have this bin full of tissue paper that's been stamped. It's been stamped with archival ink so that it doesn't run or smear. And I grabbed a few of those little star shapes and I tore them out using some water with my water tank brush. Here I'm showing some you know that you can do it they don't all have to be black you can do them in color and different stuff but I tore them out so that they would blend pretty seamlessly into the background the background has some texture to it I know you can't see it on the video but I can feel it it's kind of like maybe there was gesso brushed on like a heavy gesso and then some other stuff put on there so I collaged on those three little stars and then I moved on to pen work because these other ones are dry enough now that I can use a fine tipped pen. This is a Fabric Castell illustration pen, a bullet tip in size small. And of course I'll put all the products that I used in the links, the description box below the video. If you use those links, I get a few cents because it will take you to Amazon to the Amazon affiliate program. Doesn't cost you anything. You're just buying whatever you're going to buy on Amazon, but I get a few cents if you use my link. So I always appreciate that. So I used the small pin to go around the edges and kind of draw in some of the details of this little birdie that was die cut with white cardstock. And then now I'm using my Neocolor 2 water soluble crayons and I am coloring it in, adding different colors. I used kind of a, a chartreuse green and a darker green and then a couple different colors of blue kind of blends with the background but stands out enough and I applied the crayon directly to the paper and then blended it out with the water tank brush and then eventually I will add some white highlights and some some darker colors I'm just I'm kind of working all of them at the same time so I work, I do a little bit on something, set it aside to dry, then I move to the next one, then set that one aside to dry, move to the next one, so that I don't have to spend a lot of time drying them with the heat tool or something like that. I just let them dry naturally that way. It's a nice way to work <clears throat> on multiple things. You can do that with your art journal pages too. You can work on, work on more than one at a time so that you have drying time in between rather than constantly having to force dry everything. So... A lot of people like to do it that way to work multiple projects at once and I think it's a pretty a pretty cool idea. So now I'm using a Stabilo All pencil which is a highly water soluble pencil to add some shading both to the vertical strips that I collaged on as well as the little butterflies around the edges and then adding a little bit of white highlight to them as well. I'm also going to put some some shimmery clear ink on there eventually but you just can't see it in the video <laughs> shimmery stuff just doesn't show up in the video I don't know why because it would be nice to be able to see it I put it on on another one of the cards too but I can see it when I'm looking at them right here in my hands but you just can't see them in the video so that one's pretty much done and I'm moving back to the next one I decide that I want to mount some of these onto a background. I like to have a line around the edge, a frame around the edge. That's something that that I enjoy personally. So I have these pieces of black cardstock already pre-cut to three and a half by two and a half. They're just stuffed in there with the other stuff. And I grabbed a few of those out when I was pulling out these backgrounds. And I'm going to trim down a few of these and glue them onto those black backgrounds. I just think it, it looks nice framed. I just, I like the way it looks. So then I'm adding some more uh, shading to this one using the Stabilo All Pencil and the water brush to make that little bird really stand out from the background. And, you know, you wanna be able to notice the bird first, not the black branches, which are the thing that seem to be the most dominant. And just touching up here and there come back in with my white Posca pen and add a little bit of highlight <clears throat> on the leaves and around the bird here and there. And then that one will be complete. It's pretty much all colored up and ready to go. 
I decide I'm going to need some words on some of these. And so I have a Tim Holtz big chat uh, booklet that's full of stickers. And I pull out one that has black background with white um, letters on it. There's both in there. There's white background, black letters, and black background, white letters. <clears throat> and I like those for ATCs because they're the right size, small little words. I decide to uh, mount this one on a background too. And then I get the idea that I'm just going to cut right along the edges and make it kind of a, I don't know, a, a more interesting edge by cutting along the, the stars, like right outside the border of the stars to make an interesting shape. And when I put it on the black background, I decided it needs something underneath it because one of the stars was already going off the edge. So now it has no legs on one side and it just looked weird. So I thought I had this little scrap. It's from the bottom of a piece of stationery from a note that somebody had sent me within their Happy Mail. And I just tore that little scrap off because I thought that swirly pattern was interesting. And so that happened to be in my bin right next to me. And I thought that would be a perfect thing to put on the edge. And then it distracts from the fact that that one star doesn't have its little points. It just, you know, it's still there, but you don't notice it as much, I guess. <laughs> I took out the set of Naturals Posca pins and I just put some dots on my undersheet. And I'm coloring in some of the legs of the stars with these pastel -y colors, kind of a an orchid lavender and some pink and some kind of coral color just for more interest it's just fun to do and I'm picking up that paint which is really just acrylic ink using my water tank brush and I also used it to make some splatters of the same colors as well and then I think I put a sticker on that one too from the Tim Holtz book of stickers manufactured by Ranger and that one's pretty much done. So that's three done. Need to make some more. Our live show lasts for an hour and a half. So it took me an hour and a half to make five ATCs that I am finished. You know, they're finished and I like them and I'm ready to share them with other people. So this swirly pink background was done with watercolor crayons on the gel plate. So it just made an interesting swirly background. I decided to kind of divide it up using some bright pink paper that is also a gel print on deli paper. And it actually has a little bit of copper in it, but it's kind of hard to see. But, you know, I like copper. <laughs> That's the best metallic. Forget about all that gold and silver and platinum. Just go for the copper. <laughs> So once that was glued down, then I'm looking for some other stuff. <coughs> Sorry, guys, I have a cold. <laughs> looking for maybe some stenciling. So I have I have this ring of, I think it's nine stencils, all from a large stencil. And I cut it up into nine pieces. This is a stencil girl stencil, of course. And it's all like stitches, kind of like embroidery. Like maybe you do ribbon embroidery or something and it looks like those type of stitches. But I just think they make interesting patterns. And so I put this one on with some eggplant colored uh, paint from Dina Wakely. And it just added some interest. And then I put a couple more pieces of paper, collaged them down. This one is a gel print on deli paper using another Stencil Girl stencil that has a very geometric tribal looking I don't know it almost looks like Aztec or something it's a really cool stencil I haven't I haven't gel printed with it in a while but it makes fantastic gel prints and then I have another piece that's kind of like a bright pink just some bright pink paint on and I, I do tear that one into a heart shape but then I end up putting something over the top and you can't really tell it's a heart shape anymore so it doesn't matter we just added some bright pink down there at the bottom for interest. I repositioned it. <laughs> and then this is when I when I see this uh, die cut. Well, first I see this copper one and I'm thinking, oh, I want to put the copper one on there. And then I decide that it's just too much. 
and I see this other one that's like a outline of a butterfly sort of kind of very angular looking and it's just it, that's a cool die I wish I had that one <laughs> I don't I don't have that but that's really cool I decide that that would be great on this card and so I glue it down and pretty happy with that I decide what it really needs is some sparkle and this is when I get out the the uh it's from Spectrum Noir. It's a brush pen and it has clear fluid in it with really, really, really fine mica. And it's just sparkly. It's, that's all I can say. It's just sparkly and shimmery. It's not big chunks of glitter. It's really fine, but it just gives the whole image a sparkle. So I put that on. I'm trying to show it. Can't really see it. <laughs> and I decided to put it on the butterflies on the other card too. And then I decide, oh, this would be nice if I put some shading around the outside. Here's one of those times when something doesn't go right. I start to put the water brush on there and I'm blending out that Stabilo All Pencil. And the die cut itself, which was cut out by somebody else with some sort of cardstock or something, is absorbent. And it starts to suck in the black and turn my white butterfly gray and I was not happy <laughs> so I had to use I had to fix it up using a white Posca pen which I ended up having to get a new one out as you can see and yeah, I stock up on those I keep them in the drawer because I use this pen probably more than any other art supply I own <laughs> I love this pen so I get a new one out that's nice and bright and opaque and I go back over the entire butterfly making sure that it remains white and not gray and then I have to dry it up a little bit and come back in with the sparkle pin again to sparkle over the areas that I put the white so you can always fix it even if something weird like that happens you can still fix it so then I put a sticker on that one and that one's finished. Oh, I put some black ink around the edges because that's that's a good thing to do. I hope you're enjoying this video and if you are, please remember to give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment or a question below. Subscribe if you haven't already and put on those notification bells because all those things help YouTube find my channel and help them realize I have something value valuable to offer and then they will recommend my channel to other people who might be interested in art processes so those things always help me out please do them so I decided I had time to do one more card and I got out this one with a really bright watercolor background and it's already trimmed down um, I made a bunch of these with these backgrounds and I had a few left already trimmed down ready to mount onto the black background and I had this uh, piece of paper that has been die cut a circle has been die cut out of it so I just kind of cut around a random rectangle so now it has a rectangle and a circle in the middle with some little scallops around the edges and I glued that down then I put on some other random pieces of red and pink just to be interesting and then I saw a heart shape tissue stamped tissue in my basket there and I decided to put that on over it I think that's a Gina Aaron stamp or else maybe it's a digital download that she has with a little heart it's a cute little heart it must be a stamp because it's been stamped onto tissue paper so I guess it must be in one of her stamp sets so then once that was down I needed it to stand out more I decided to add some color to the center of it oh I guess I went ahead and glued it down to my black first and then I decided to get the crayons out and add some color to the center of it and then also go around the edges with the black pin and the white pin to make this the heart stand out a little bit more so I guess I'm having trouble getting it stick down <laughs> I get out the illustration pen first and then um, touch up some things. Then I go around the outside edge with the black Stabilo All Pencil and blend that and then realize what I really need is to add some color in the center and add some white and black. So 
could do all that and then that card will be finished. Spotters too. There's spotters on that one. I'm kind of getting ahead of myself because I spent so much time trying to press that down to its back to its backing. It wouldn't stick. <laughs> Stupid glue stick wasn't working. So here I am uh, touching up the black, adding some white, and generally making this heart stand out from the background a little bit more. So that's my video for today with the collage artist trading cards that I'll be sending away to some of the winners from the drawing, which will be announced tomorrow. So watch for that. And I think that is it for me for today. Thanks. Bye-bye.